Hello and welcome to the chapter Natural Resistomes. As already highlighted in the previous chapter, resistomes are an integral part of various microbiomes of diverse habitats and environments and antimicrobial resistance was so far observed in most of the microorganisms that have been studied. However, pathogenic microorganisms that evolve in such an environment can become a serious burden if they are transferred to our food chain or clinical environments. The One Health Principle envisages preventing the occurrence of such pathogens from the outset. In order to achieve this, our understanding of natural resistomes and their responses to anthropogenic factors must be improved. So how are resistomes analyzed? Certain microbiomes can encompass hundreds or even thousands of different antimicrobial resistance determinants, and to capture and analyze all of them, specific high-throughput techniques are required. In the second module of this MOOC, Techniques and Methods, we already discussed the different omics technologies and several of them are also used to analyze resistomes. By metagenomics analysis, genes that encode for resistance determinants can be identified and their prevalence can be quantified. The current state-of-the-art technique to identify resistant genes in medicine and agriculture is to isolate bacteria and cultivate them on nutrient media, followed by sequencing their genomes so-called whole genome sequencing. The DNA fragments that are provided by sequencing are then assembled back to whole bacterial genomes and the resistant genes can be identified. Here, metagenomic sequencing provides a huge additional advantage. The DNA fragments of the whole microbiome can also be, based on reference datasets, assembled to whole bacterial genomes, which are then referred to as metagenome assembled genomes, or MACs. Also for these MACs, the resistant genes can be identified, but without being dependent on cultivating those bacteria. Remember, so far we are only able to cultivate about 3% of all microbes. However, this method also comes with a downside. Some of the detected resistant genes can be inactive relics or not expressed in the respective cell due to various regulation mechanisms. This means that resistomes that are analyzed by metagenomics only show us potentially present antimicrobial resistances. In order to limit the resistome to expressed, so actually active, resistance determinants, metatranscriptomics must be implemented. Resistome analysis based on metatranscriptomics have a lower throughput compared to metagenomics and re require reference templates, but their implementation ensures that only expressed resistant determinants are assessed. Another possibility is to employ metaproteomics in order to study on protein level. While this method can provide very precise insights into resistomes, it currently has the lowest throughput when compared with the aforementioned methods. Overall, as already highlighted in the methods chapter, a combination of different techniques and also the use of classical methods such as cultivation and quantitative PCR proves useful in most resistome studies. Resistome research of natural environments is only beginning to gain momentum. After analysis, methods became implementable for resistomes. Research focused mainly on human-related environments, such as hospitals, agriculture and wastewater environments. But recently, some natural environments with highly complex resistomes were identified. For example, bog ecosystems are important reservoirs for antimicrobial resistant bacteria. Bog ecosystems formerly occupied a major proportion of the landmass in the Northern Hemisphere, while today, due to land use and urbanization, several of these ecosystems are already degraded. However, they are very important due to their role as carbon sinks. Mosses constitute the predominant vegetation in bog environments. Mosses are evolutionary old plants and they were found to harbor more diverse bacterial communities than vascular plants. It is most likely due to this circumstance that they are also harboring one of the most complex resistomes discovered in nature so far. One general characteristic of such resistomes is that they are highly diverse, but most of the antimicrobial resistances only occur in low frequencies. In addition to mosses, also lichens, which are symbiosis of fungi and algae or cyanobacteria, harbor complex resistomes. Here, antimicrobial resistances are not only required to outcompete other microorganisms in lichen microbiomes, but also to resist a wide variety of antimicrobial compounds that are produced by the host organism. 
Antimicrobial substances are also produced by plants that are consumed by humans. When the resistomes of, for example, apple and arugula were analyzed, it was found that in addition to efflux pumps, also a broad range of specific resistance mechanisms were present. Detailed knowledge about these natural resistome hotspots and how they are controlled under natural circumstances will allow us to design strategies embedded in the One Health principle in order to prevent the emergence of new antimicrobial resistant pathogens. As mentioned already in the last chapter, the global spread and emergence of antimicrobial resistance is mainly due to anthropogenic use and misuse over the past decades. But it is not only the direct application of antibiotics that selects for resistance emergence in the microbiome. Several other anthropogenic factors were identified that shape resistomes. Especially contaminated wastewater and various agricultural systems are known for a long time to be enriched with antimicrobial resistant pathogens and instead of providing a broad spectrum of protection, their resistance determinants now specifically target therapeutic agents. A key feature that distinguishes them from natural resistomes is that the overall diversity of resistance mechanisms is tendentially lower while the frequency of specific resistances is increased. Recent studies have also shown us that the use of certain chemicals that are common in agriculture can cause unwanted changes in natural resistomes, for example in those of lichen that normally inhibit pristine environments. It is simply of utmost importance to limit exposure of natural environments to chemicals which trigger their resistomes. So summing this chapter up, resistomes are a common feature of various natural as well as anthropogenically influenced microbiomes. Their analysis provides fundamental insights into the prevalence of different antimicrobial resistances in the environment and facilitates strategical developments that are required to avoid the emergence of new multi-resistant pathogens. In the next chapter, we will discuss the exposome, which is a relatively complex topic, yet of particular importance. See you there and thank you for your attention.